Hi there, welcome back everyone. So in this video, we're gonna look at the ARM single cycle architecture. I personally really like this topic. I, I really find it fascinating to look at how a processor actually processes information. So we take all those um, steps that we've seen prior where we've learned how like, for instance, a ARM uh, instruction gets converted to machine code. Okay, so let's take an R type instruction, for example, such as this add, um, register two plus register three, storing the result in register one. Okay, let's take this ARM instruction, and to save some time, I've already converted it into the machine code here. Okay, now we're gonna learn how to trace this in the ARM single cycle, okay? And a couple things to get us started that I wanna point out. For one, to do this, okay, this, we're gonna, we're gonna trace one particular instruction Okay, and we are gonna assume that this here is an example of our instruction memory. Okay, so we have some instruction memory that at, at a particular address, and I just made up a certain address, that we have this 32-bit instruction. Okay, this 32-bit instruction. All right, this machine code happens to represent this here in ARM when we look at the assembly language version. Okay, so we need to, to tr one of the kind of prereqs before we trace anything is just to look at the state of memory that we're gonna be using. And so we're gonna trace this instruction, we're gonna be aware of which address in memory it's being, it's being stored, okay? We're gonna assume that the program counter, okay, contains that address, all right? This will make more sense in a second when we look at the actual uh, diagram of the processor, okay? And we also need to know the state of the register the register file, okay? Particularly, the, there's really only two registers that we truly need to know the state of. Registers two and three, okay? Because those are the ones that we're gonna, we're gonna read these two registers. So the other ones really don't matter for this, for tracing this. But we're gonna be reading these registers so we better know what's actually, con like what is stored in those, inside those registers to be able to actually trace what's happening, okay? So this is all based around the idea here that the best way to understand the processor, okay, to understand this processor, this is our single cycle ARM processor here, the best way to understand it is to trace the data path, trace what happens when we try to run this R type instruction, okay? And we'll look at the different components, what they're doing, right? What the inputs and outputs out of these different components of the processor are, okay? We'll end up having subsequent videos looking at other different types of instructions and how they work as well. And you come out with a, a pretty good understanding about how processors work by the end of uh, going through a certain sequence, a certain number of these videos tracing the ARM single cycle processor, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is we're gonna, so here's our program counter, right? Our program counter, it's just a register. And we're going to assume that the program counter is this here. It's actually value 12 in binary being represented. Okay, we're gonna assume that this is that that's the current starting point here. Okay, so I'm gonna write this all in binary that coming out of this register here, we're gonna assume that that is, um, that that is the um, register that is value 12. Okay, so this will allow us as we trace here, okay, that coming out here of this program counter is gonna be the value 12. Okay, and we see that this signal, right, that wire is running all the way through here. So 12 is gonna be the value at each one of those locations, okay? Now let's, let's continue that thought a little bit about what happens with the program counter. Well, we obviously can see here that there's an adder that automatically adds four to the current value of the program counter, okay? That automatically adds four, right? Um, and that makes sense because that is telling us that the next location, remember we're, we have 32 bits for each instruction, right? 32 bits for each instruction. So the next instruction that we're gonna look at after we run 
this current instruction is going to be, we're going to update it to go to the next instruction. So we're going to go four bytes further in memory. Okay. All right, we'll come back to that momentarily. All right. Now, let's look at instruction memory down here. Instruction memory, we read this address, address 12 in instruction memory. And I had mentioned previously that if we look at address 12, right, this instruction is going to be stored there. Okay, this add instruction. Okay, so coming out of this location here, is going to be the bits for the add instruction. Okay, and I'm just gonna highlight the, the ones that are used at first, okay? So let's just take a look at the certain components of it. So up here, this is the op code, okay? Bits 31 to 21, or 21 to 31. Okay, when we look at these 11 bits, Okay, those are the 11 bits that represent the opcode here. The opcode that indicates that, hey, this is indeed an add instruction. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and write that opcode there. These 11 bits, and actually let me just make sure I'm writing it correctly. Believe that's right. Yes. Oops, one more. Okay, so those 11 bits represent the opcode. They're basically telling this control unit here that this is an add instruction. Okay, and we're going to set some control signals based on that momentarily, but we'll come back to that. Okay, we have bits 5 through 9, 5 through 9. Okay, when we look at that, that's our RN, RN. We have value 2 here for indicating register 2. Right, this is this is our register two here. Okay, so we have the address of that register, register two. I'm not gonna do the leading zeros, okay? It's five bits, we can see it's five bits here. Okay, but I'm just gonna write two just to keep it a little more clean. Okay, bits 16 to 20, 16 to 20, that's our RM. Our RM is register three. It's register three. Okay. Now, I want to point out that one of the most essential things when it comes to actually doing this, right, when it comes to actually like um, tracing anything, is just remember what the instruction does. Okay. So we think of what, what remember, what we're tracing is we're tracing this. Okay, we're tracing the add instruction where we read registers two and three and we store the result in register one. Okay, so we want to remember that we're reading two registers and we're reading these two registers. Okay, and we're writing to this register. Okay, so don't forget that, right? You want to kind of always come back to what does the instruction do? Okay. And how must that be supported by the underlying architecture? Okay. So this makes sense currently. If we start looking at what, how we're starting to build this, notice we have, we're reading register two. Looks like we're starting to read register three. We haven't actually completely connected that yet. And we're also going to write to register one down here. Bits zero through four should represent register one, right? Register one. Okay. This is register one. Okay. Now I could keep, I could look back at that machine code, right? But a lot of times you could just say, kind of know what the processor needs to do and you can actually just figure it out that way too. Okay. Now, um, in addition to, so we're going to, we're going to write to register one. We're going to read these two registers. This multiplexer here is going to select which bits is going to be the output. Right, we have two choices. We have the bits 16 through 20 or bits 0 through 4. Okay, this control signal here is going to end up being value um, 0. Okay, 
this signal here is going to be zero because we are selecting, we know that we want to be able to read from register three. Okay, that this value here should be register three. Right? If that control value was one, we would be we would be writing uh, reading from register one, which is not what this this instruction does not read from register one. Okay. We'll see different types of instructions will will select this differently. We'll see how this multiplexer, right, this mux, how different instruction types, right now we're looking at an R type instruction. We'll see how different instruction types will select one here because the bits um, will that are going to be um, we're going to look at zero, th four, uh, zero through four are going to have to be fed up into reading from register two. Okay, we'll come back to that. All right, um, so let's continue on. Right, let's continue on. So let's look at we we're reading for instance register two here, and so out the other end we're going to get the value of register two and register three. Okay, the value of register two, I gotta look back at the state of memory here. Okay, and it's it looks like that's, um, we look at that and it looks like it's 10, right? Um, actually, I'm sorry, it looks like it's six and seven. Okay, six and seven for register, and base 10, 6 and 7 here, okay? And so here, and 7, and we're also going to have this multiplexer is going to select, this ALU source is going to select that it's that input 0 is going to be the output here, okay? Okay, the control is what's going to determine based on the instruction because it's an add instruction, right? Because it's an add instruction, the control is determining these different, is looking at that opcode saying, hey, an add instruction must set these control values a certain way. Okay, that it's this one here indicates that it needs to read two registers, okay, and write to one. That's why it's set to zero. And this one here is set to zero because we're going to add, right, the value of both registers, right? We need the ALU to take the input of both registers here. Okay. Now, after we've added those together, we get the output. And we're going to actually bypass memory here. Okay. And the output... Right, you can you can look at that being connected to the address and a data memory there, but we don't actually use data memory at all for this. We'll kind of come back to that. Okay. The output of this, so we have seven and six. Okay, so we have thirteen. Right, so we're gonna have eight plus four. Okay. Plus one. Okay, so thirteen. Okay, and that value is going to get fed back all the way up here that we are writing that value 13 back to, the re to a register. And not just any register, we're writing that value 13 to register 1, right? Just look at the instruction, you know that that must be what's happening, right? We're adding register two plus register three and we're writing it to register one, okay? All right, now after that, the instruction's mostly done. I mean, we have traced almost everything. We gotta look up here too. We started looking at the program counter. Program counter, we said, okay, let's assume that this instruction we're tracing is in address 12. We automatically add four to it, okay, to get to the next address. Okay, and what we'll see here is, since this is not a branch instruction, 
right? There's no branching going on. It's just automatically going to the next instruction. That's going to come around and we're going to we're going to advance by 4. Okay. Okay, we're going to advance by 4 to make it 16. Okay. All right. Uh, and I think I'm missing one zero here, aren't I? Okay. You might have noticed that before. I was missing one zero. Okay. So at the next clock cycle, this here, 16, will become the new value of this program counter register. All right, before we wrap this up, let's just take a look at the control values of what they must be. We already traced some of them. Okay, this reg to location one, we traced that, and we said, hey, that must be like this one here. Where we said, hey, that must be zero because we need to read two registers and write to one. Okay, now there is a table, right? You could see it. Um, in some of the documentation, there is a table that will actually define what the control value should be for certain types of instructions. Okay, I would strongly recommend not looking at the table though, because if you to really understand the stuff, you should be able to de derive it yourself to have a really good, firm understanding of how everything works. Okay, you could figure it out based on what the instruction must do, what these values must be. Okay, it gives you that that higher level conceptual understanding of how the processor works. Right, we looked at this one here, ALU source that must be zero. If not, it would be using this other signal that we'll talk about later on for say an I type instruction might we'll use that or a D type instruction, we'll come back to that. Okay. Register write, that basically says, hey, are we writing to a register or not? Okay, are we writing to a register? Zero is false, one is true. Okay, we are writing to a register. We're writing to register one. So that's a one. Okay. Um, let's look at some of the other ones. Let's trace all of these, right? Mem write. That says, are we writing to memory? No, we're not. Okay. The only instruction that we've looked at that writes to memory is a store. Okay. So that's zero for false, right? Similarly, if we look at this one, this is a mem read. This one says, are we reading from memory? Okay, the instruction that reads from memory is the load. This is also zero. Okay, we are not reading from memory. Okay. This signal here, unconditional branch. Okay, it says, hey, is this an unconditional branch? An unconditional branch is just something that an, an arm is just just a B, right? B and then a, the address, the label where we need to go, right? This is not an unconditional branch, so that's zero, okay? And then this signal here says, well, is it a conditional branch? No, it's not a conditional branch. So it's a zero. I'll come back to what this input, this signal here out of the ALU is later on. However, right now, it doesn't matter, okay? Because zero ended with anything is zero. So we, we don't need to know anything about that to know that this is zero, zero or zero is zero. Okay, we can see how that control signal set this multiplexer to select this input as the output okay um, we're really close uh, we didn't look at this one yet the mem to reg okay that one says hey should we use as the output of this multiplexer the one that feeds into writing the data that we're writing to the registers should it be the output of memory which will be case for a load instruction or is it the value that bypasses memory that comes from the ALU? Okay, this is the one that bypasses memory, right? This instruction doesn't need to do anything with memory at all. Okay, now we're really close, right? The only thing I haven't shown here, and I'm gonna skip some of the details here, 
uh, for simplicity is if we look at this ALU op code here, right? We have a separate little control unit called the ALU control. Effectively, the only detail I want to focus on right now is just this effectively tells, sends a signal to the ALU that it should perform an add in operation. Okay. So this is some information being sent from the control unit saying, hey, this is an add instruction, right? And then this other control signal uh, unit set is going to, it has some other information it can sometimes look at, okay? But effectively, the ALU control is saying, what does the ALU need to do, right? It can add, it can subtract, it can do other types of operations. A whole host, you've looked at ALUs in depth before, you've looked at how to construct them out of digital logic, right? Um, so we're not gonna, I'm not gonna focus on, it's basically this is just saying, hey, this needs to add. And it sets a couple bits accordingly to say, hey, this should perform an add, okay? All right, let's end the video there. Um, that is the trace of looking at an add instruction. And what I wanna point out here is this is exceptionally similar to other types of R types instructions, right? Very, very similar data path on how to trace those, okay? And I'd also strongly recommend that the goal here is not to memorize how to trace these things, right? The goal is to have an understanding of how a processor works, that conceptual understanding, okay? So that you can, you know how, to, how they're designed and the fundamentals and the fact that if we, I showed you a different type of um, processor architecture, right? Like for instance, a common one that's also taught in universities, the MIPS architecture, for instance, you will find that they're exceptionally similar because the foundations for how they work are extremely, are based on the same underlying fundamentals, okay? Uh, we, next step is we will look at other types of instruction formats. We'll look at I types. We'll look at data, the data transfer instructions as well, okay? And once we have that understanding of those different formats, we'll then start to ease some of our assumptions here and look at how we can speed this up to make this processor faster. Okay, but that's for another time and another video.